Good morning, Passion Church. Good morning. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Good to see everyone here. I think we've got a few guests this morning. It's good to see you. We welcome you. Glad to have you with us this morning. We want to welcome everyone out on social media. We thank you so much for choosing to worship with us this morning. We're going to raise a hallelujah this morning. He is worthy of our praise. We raise it. It's the weapon that we use. Our praise is a weapon we use to defeat the enemy. Hallelujah. And if there's never been a more time than today, this time to raise a hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's raise it this morning. Storm, louder and 
is a hallelujah. And I will watch the darkness flee. There is a hallelujah. In the middle of the mystery. There is a hallelujah. You know why? Because he's the way maker. Hallelujah. He's the one and only way maker. Glory Amen. to God. 
you, but in these days and these times, I need to hear about my way maker. I need to be reminded about the way maker. See, I don't know about you, but see, sometimes you can let life, you can let all that's going on become bigger and greater than the one that's living on the inside of you and me. But I'm telling you, he is the way maker. When there seems to be no way, our God is the way maker. And I'm telling you, this thing's bigger than anything you could ever think or imagine. It's not just about you and your four, and I'm sorry. I know that seems to be hard right now because the enemy would like for you to think that you need to hold up and shut up. But this ain't a time for us just to be quiet. 
We've got people out there that need to know about this way maker, that need to know about the love of God. And the only way they're going to know it is if we tell them. And if we can't tell them in the church, then how are we going to tell them out there? If we can't show them in here, then we can't show them out there. I'm telling you, the harvest is ready. They need to know about this way maker. They need to know about the love of God and the goodness of God and the mercy of God. They need to know it more than ever. And I'm telling you, but it's going to take you and me first doing it in here and then taking it out there. Amen. Well, I got a little excited. I didn't get a chance to introduce myself. If you're visiting for the first time, we have a first time guest. We want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. If you're visiting for the first time on Facebook or YouTube or listening maybe on podcasts for the first time, we want to welcome you to Passion Church here in Alexander City. We encourage you. Listen to us, watch us, come and visit. We're following safety precautions. We want you to feel safe, but I'm telling you, there's power in the house of God. There's something that happens when we come together more than I know than there is any other way. Now, we want to give you, take this time to give you an opportunity to give both in the house. If you haven't uh, received an offering envelope, you can raise your hand. The ushers will serve you. If you're viewing by uh, video, uh, you can give online. You can go to mypassion.church, Alexander City Campus. You can go on there to the giving section, and you will click the Alex City Campus. You can also come by the church. Uh, we're open Monday through Thursday, 9 through 12. But it, you can also, when you visit the website, it will also tell you about ways to give by texting. So we have many ways to give, and we want to encourage you to continue to be faithful to God because, listen, when we are faithful to God, then it opens up the windows of heaven upon our lives. These are not a time to go back. It's not a time to draw back. It's not a time to give less. It's not a time to do anything less. If anything, it's a time to do more, give more, and pray more because we are in a time of harvest. So I want to pray for all of those that are giving. So, Father, right now we just thank you for those that have given, that are giving. We just thank you right now, God just to reach down and touch uh, their giving right now, both in tithes and in offering. We thank you, God, for the privilege and the opportunity to give on to you. For when we give our money and mix our money onto you, there's blessings that come upon us, God, that exceed anything. And, God, when we're in lack, that even in a time of famine, it says that tithers, the givers, God, will be blessed to be a blessing, God, that we will arise, we will rise up on top in the name of Jesus so that we can be a blessing and what a testimony that it is to your word, that your word is true. And we thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. So once again, we want to welcome you. And also on our website, there's some new features on there, and I wanted to share those, that when you go on there uh, and you click on the Alexander City or Alex City campus, it'll say on there like most recent video, and when you click on that, it'll show whichever one was most recently recorded. Like if, the, if today, this afternoon, you go click on there, it would show this one here. But also if you want, if it says online viewing, online videos, when you click on that now, it'll automatically take you to YouTube and it'll show you every Sunday service. It'll show you every Tuesday where pastor does pastor on the porch. It'll show you every Thursday where he does pastor from the pastor. And it'll even show you the uh, Just Believe Woman's Conference that I had just did I believe it was on Thursday so it's a really neat uh, feature now you're not having to look all over the place you can go one place on that website and be able to click on any and all of uh, the uh, videos plus you'll still be able to go to all of the podcast viewing so share that website with your friends so that they can go back and be encouraged by the word of God so I do want to put a quick plug in for the just believe woman's conference which is this weekend Friday night at 7 p.m. and Saturday at 10.30. We're going to be, be both doing both live in the house 
and on Facebook Live. So I encourage you, if you can't come, then tune in. We're still going to have a blessed time. Even in the midst of all of this, God is going to show up and show out. And I believe there's going to be a special anointing and a special thing for each and every one of you that come and that both tune in. We're going to have a round table, heart to heart, some discussion. We're going to talk about things that you're going through, that we've been going through as women. And I'm telling you, you're going to be encouraged during these times. So I encourage you uh, to come share with your friends. We have t-shirts available out there. They're hot pink this year, so if you'd like one this year, just uh, go out there. Sonia will take care of you after service. You can purchase. If you're viewing and say you would like one, you can contact the church and go ahead and make arrangements to come by and pick one up. We are so excited about what God is doing. We're going to still be giving away free gifts if you're here in the house. If you're viewing online for both of those services, if you'll just say on there, put my name in the bucket or put my ticket in there, whatever, that we'll be sure at the end of the service that if we draw your name and you're watching then all you got to do is come by the church and pick it up we have an opportunity too where you can have a chance to uh, buy a ticket for $50 cash so just contact the church or visit the Facebook page and send a message if you'd like to uh, have any questions about it but I'm telling you women if you're facing anything right now during these times you need to tune in or be here if at all possible amen and if any men would like to come on Friday night we always like that so that we have the women feel secure as they're going out to their cars in the parking lot uh, we would love for you to come now we're not having lunch this year we usually do have a nice luncheon on Saturday but do with everything going on we're not going to have that but we will have refreshments that we'll allow you to take with you so if you'd like to be part of that and helping you can see me after service too so both Friday night and Saturday please be here if you can if not then tune in because I'm going to tell you something you're not in this alone we're in it with you and so is God so father I just thank you right now for a peace upon your people I thank you for an overwhelming love just flowing over your people right now oh God you're super on their natural I thank you God that it says that when we are weak you are strong you come upon us God and make our weakness become strong that our weaknesses become your strength father I thank you God that when we don't have peace you become Become our peace when there's no joy you become our joy I thank you right now for peace upon your people joy God healing and wholeness and restoration and everything the enemy has stolen God there's going to be payback in the name of Jesus that even in the time of famine that God's people will be blessed to be a blessing we call your people blessed God let our voices rise up to those that are hurting and those that are crying out and they need to see and hear about your love. Let us be that life that tells your story. Use us, God. Let our vessels be used for your glory and not for selfishness. Oh, God, please let our lives radiate your love and your forgiveness and your goodness and your mercy. And we'll give you the praise and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be in the house of God. The scripture says, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of God. Now, I'm all for the drive through window. I'm all for the takeout service. But, you know, real relationship and fellowship happens in the dine-in. Amen. I got good news for you. The church is still open for business. Hallelujah. You can still come uh, to church. We don't want anyone to do anything that they feel uncomfortable with or not safe with. But uh, at some point uh, in time, uh, God has always intended that the church gather uh, together and uh if you can't come, he's going to come to you via social media. We welcome you uh, today. So glad uh, that uh, you get to join us uh, today. And today we're going to look to the greater one. Amen. I want to uh, go to Psalms 133. 
you know, any time the Bible says that we are made in the image and likeness uh, of God. Well, uh, you are the portrait uh, that the Lord is painting, and that's one brush stroke, one layer, uh, one outline, one detail at a time. And if you're making an exact copy of something, you would have to look at the copy. You'd have to look at the original, and then you and then you'd have to uh, recreate that, so to speak, uh, on the uh, canvas that's the copy. Isn't that true? Amen. Uh, so I don't mind looking at Psalms 133 again, and the title of this is Unity. Uh, and I believe that this is God's picture uh, for us. And I also believe that we're living in the time of how God works is that this is the seed. It is the word seed. It is the word picture, if you will, uh, that God is supplying us. And it'll be the word that he's working uh, in, in painting a portrait uh, that is pleasing to him. That is the way that he sees you and I, and not just a you over here and an I over there, but this, but this uh, concept that God has of a oneness. Where Jesus, Jesus prayed uh, in his priestly prayer in John 17, he said, Father, I want them to be one as we are one. See? So we first have to have some uh, knowledge and understanding of, of the oneness of the Father and Jesus as the Son, of that, of that relationship, of that unity that he talked about. Even beyond that, the oneness that he talked about. And in order for us to then be an expression of that with one another. Now, I realize that uh, if we just look at um, the church, if we look at the world, um, there's, a, there's a sharp contrast uh, to this concept of oneness. But isn't that all the more reason uh, to keep looking at the way it should be, the way it could be, the way it would be if there's a people that will agree with God. In the face of, uh, in the face of all of this, and we're facing some things today, aren't we? You know, um, I, I believe it's important that we, that we see God face to face. Every time in the... Uh, Psalms of the Old uh, Testament, it, it, and you'll see this translated over into the New Testament, but when it talks about the presence of God, when, when the um, original uh, stenographers, if you will, in that language understood that they were talking of face-to-face. They weren't just talking about coming into a fog and a feeling. They were, they were, David especially said that, is, that there was this uh, about the presence of God, that it was a face to face. It was a face to face. Probably the most, uh, the the highest and the best descript, if you will. That God wants, you know. Think about your ultimate uh, destination. Your destiny uh, for eternity is that you will be face to face with God. I know you want to see Granny and Auntie and old Uncle Joe and all of them, and they'll be waiting for you at the gate. You know, but there's an old, uh, I think it was old Southern Gospel song that said, I want to see Jesus face to face. And uh, what a wonderful time that that will be. Amen. For now, we take it by faith. You know, we don't have to see Jesus right now. That wouldn't be faith, would it? Are you listening? You know? Uh, 
Jesus addressed that in saying this, you know, Tom, Thomas, doubting Thomas is who he's called. He was a person of weak faith. And he uh, insisted, he goes, I'm not going to believe unless I see him. Well, Jesus obliged that. But remember, and then he said this, he goes, you have, you believe because you have seen me. He goes, but I'm telling you, he goes, there's a blessing beyond seeing. He said, blessed are those who have believed and have not seen. Amen. You know, Jesus is always kind of a one-up guy, isn't he? Why is that? Because he is the greater one. Always and ever the greater one. If this is great, just wait. God's got a greater one. God's greater than that. He is the greater one. One, translate, one place David called him the greatest of all but he certainly is a greater one well in this verses in these this portion of scripture it says how truly wonderful and delightful i'm reading out of the passion bible psalms 133 verses 1 to see brothers and sisters living together in sweet unity god wants a oneness this is his picture uh he calls it a sweet unity and, and he specifically talks about the brethren and the sister in, the brothers and the sisters living together, living life, doing life together. And we can see from this verse of Scripture in the, in the Scriptures that come after this what this affords us. This is a prerequisite to, he said, it is as precious as the sacred scented oil flowing from the head of the high priest Aaron, dripping down upon his beard and running all the way down to the hem of his priestly robes. This heavenly harmony can be compared to the dew dripping down from the skies upon Mount Hermon, refreshing the mountain slopes of Israel. For from this realm of sweet harmony, God will release his eternal blessing, the promise of life forevermore. Now, now the, the important points that we want to look at here is simply this. Two, what this decision and choice uh, to look at this and to look at it long enough to let God get this on the inside of us and to make a decision concerning it. It's not based on fears or faults or failings, but is uh, that, that surround us. Are you listening? First of all, of ourselves or others, but it is a de determined decision. God, this should be the final word in my own life. As for me and my part, see, uh, the supply that I'm going to bring is this this harmony is this peace with God and peace with one another now um, what this affords us the anointing or it, the the oil is significant of the anointing which is of the anointed one Jesus is the anointed one Jesus Christ Christ was not his last name it was his function amen the anointed one, and there, and he was. We would have to uh, agree on this. Uh, he was uh, anointed by God, approved, uh, anointed, enabled by God uh, to show the world the Father, to show the world the love that the Father had for the world. That's what he said. I came to show you the Father. And I came to show you how a son, a child of God, uh, interacts with the fatherhood of the Father God. This is life as it should be. I'm, I'm uh, a son, the firstborn among many brethren. Now, un unequivocally and unarguably, uh, the son of God, but not the only one. He came that he would not be the only one, but that he would be the firstborn among many brethren and sisters. Amen. That he, and didn't he say that? He said, I'm going to my father and your father. He said that in the garden. 
Okay. That was what he purchased for us. So this, this, this oneness, this decision to stay with this. Because how many of you know that once you start something with God, uh, for the, and you start from this side to the other side, to go from where you are to where he wants you to be, some stuff going to come up in the middle. There's going to be some issues that happen between here and there because there is an enemy. There's just stuff in the world. Are you listening? Uh, but what this affords us is the anointing and the anointed one. And it also affords us the blessing of the blessed one. God said to Abraham, he goes in blessing, and he was talking about Jesus. He said, in blessing him, I'm going to bless you, see, and you're going to become a blessing to all the families of the earth. So what, what this unity and, and is contingent upon, the anointing flowing, the anointing being released, the outpouring of the uh, uh, of the anointing, of, of the anointed one and his anointed, and the blessing of the blessed one are afforded us because we're doing verse number one. We're engaged in a process, and we're trying to make progress. That's success. Just stay with it and stay at it. Are you listening? Don't start and then stop and say it don't work. No, we've got to work it all the way through. You know, Jimmy Mechanics, and boy, you know what it would be if he's rebuilding the motor and he tears it all down, parts and pieces all around it. God only knows and, and him how to get it all back together again. But he goes, ah, you know, I changed my mind. It ain't going to work. Well, it ain't going to work like that. It's all in pieces. <laughs> you know, the breakthroughs and the follow-through. Amen? Oh, praise the Lord. Sorry, Jimmy, to drag you way up in here in this. You need a good mechanic. I got one for you. Anyhow, uh, by contrast, division, disjointedness, this disharmony and uh, these types of things cost us the anointed one and his anointing. It's a huge price to pay. Uh, and to be and to be robbed of the blessed one and his blessing to just let it all hang out there say what just comes to mind and act like you know however well that's not a disciple I, I understand that discipline is, a, is not a four-letter word, but if you could condense it, people would keep, people see it as a cuss word and fuss over it. But it's, it's the first and major part of a disciple. A follower of Jesus means that, uh, that I'm going to not just follow him, but I'm going to follow through with his working and dealing in my life. It, which is this, is to paint a pleasing picture for the Father that we're made in the image and likeness of them, the Father and the Son, uh, in oneness. That's not too deep to handle. Now, uh, when we take this and, and, uh, and we look at uh, both the church you know, and the world today, there's a problem here. You know, uh, and some problems, in that, because the world is, is always going to have problems. We live in a world full of problems. Amen? Uh, and and the, mo all of those problems are people problems. And that's okay. People, if you're going to be involved with people uh, at all, uh, including yourself, there's a problem here. And, and you know, that's okay. That's all right. You know, there, it's okay to not be okay. Let's just not stay that way. Amen. And that, let's not get on the performance treadmill and be religious about it. Let's just allow God, uh, let's love God and accept the love that God's given to us. He will change us if we give him a willing heart 
and, an, and, and a decision to obey Him. The willing and obedient, see. The, God doesn't look for perfection, but He looks for a willingness, a humility uh, in us. You know, some problems are very personal to us, and then there are some uh, problems, and to us alone, but then there are some problems uh, that are that affect us and, and, are, and are common, they're corporate to uh, all of us. Now, the church uniquely is responsible before God and to God to account for this oneness. Not the world, but the church. All right? And we, will, we, will be, we are responsible before God and we are responsible to God also for what we witness to others where this oneness is concerned. Jesus said it's such a pivot point and a hinge uh, for this great door uh, uh, of God to open or stay closed in our lives. He said the world will know me by seeing you. And not just you alone, but by you and your brothers and sisters. How you love, how you do the one another thing. One another. And we've looked at the one another. Now listen, the church is to live larger than life. Why is that? Because God is larger than life. There's an old song that says, your loving kindness is greater than life. Oh, absolutely. Why? Because God, who is love, is greater than life. I don't care what you face in this life, what problem arises, what, what happens for us or happens to us or doesn't happen for us or happen to us. Here's the, here's the thing. God is greater than all of that. We serve a God who is greater than all that, and the Bible says that greater one lives on the inside of you, and he is greater than he that is in the world. So we are to live larger than life. You know, your winning and being victorious in life is not just for your own self, but it is going to affect other people in a witness to them. In a witness to them. Are you listening? We, we uh, would be living in much less than Jesus died and paid for, suffered loss, for are you listening in order to gain the victory the victory the bible says and this is the victory of jesus that overcomes the world even our faith in him we have to have faith in the victorious god that you're going to win that you're going to win the end of the story is that you win that you're victorious and that is glorious to god amen all right and now listen, we also need to be real careful. Pastor Sandy alluded to it, and, and, and here's the, you know, uh, here's the tendency is that in, you know, be careful in a time of expansion, all right, when, when you know, that we're, not, that, that we're not doing a contraction, okay? See? Where, where we just pull back and it becomes, uh, you know, uh, us four and no more, or just me, myself, and I. See, Jesus said uh, all uh, to us and for us, the greater vision, he says, was this. He said, all people, all people. This is for everyone, everywhere, all right? All people. And we've looked at that and defined that out of the Word of God in just a couple of places, but over and over and over again, it includes all people. And if that's how God sees it, then shouldn't that be how we see it? You know, the, the devil tries to, tries, tries to cause a negative out of something that is, because that is, he can only twist and pervert, something that is very positive. Our differences... And, and the diversity that we have, first of all, was God's idea. And so it was, and he, and he said that when he made Adam and uh, uh, informed him, uh, the Bible says that he said that it was very good. 
And inside of Adam was you and I. Way, 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 way here down the line. We came originally from God. All of us. What color is God? All of them. What class is God? Over everyone, everything. He is, you know, but you know what? Jesus lifted you when you get born again into that God class. The image and likeness of God gave you authority. And that authority is right in underneath your nose. And the pressure that's put on you to say some stupid stuff or to just say stuff you wish you'd never let loose, but words are powerful. Listen, the, one of the words uh, uh, that we had for 2020, it said the prayers will be the stayers. See, it is stay faithful to God. Stay with God. Oh, the storm rages, but stay with God. Stay with God. Amen? It will pass. God will not. Stay steady with God. Said that the prayers will be the stayers, but they will also be the sayers. The final word comes out of those who have heard from God what that word is. And I'm telling you, this is it right here. There's going to, supposed to be a release of life eternal. I'm going to tell you, we need a heavy, heavy dose of the Holy Ghost. There have been times in the past, so we can reference history and know that there have been times in the past where God just reigned all over everywhere and everything, and there was out of the ruin comes real revival. That is, that is not just a spiritual thing. It is a soulish thing. It is a body thing. It is a culture thing. It is a everything. Boy, that's what I'm looking uh, for. Because if you begin to look with look at him, this is you begin to he'll show you what he sees. He'll declare the end from the beginning and go, Don't get bogged down with all this stuff. I know the dust is flying. I know and now listen, dust is real, honey. Have you ever been in it? You could taste it. It's up your nose and your eyes and your ears, all over your clothes. It has an effect on you. But here's the thing that's not to be how it all ends. Are you listening? That is not the determining factor of how it is going to end. This word is that God is, uh, that is, God is working. So Jesus had a clear vision. He said, now my house is to be a house of prayer, a house of prayer. This is how God sees the house, how he sees his people. He goes, a people who will pray for all people. And boy, I'm going to tell you what now. Uh, all people face problems. And all problems are with people, uh, uh, are common to people. But listen, they are sourced. All problems are sourced from the problem maker. The problem is the devil at the source, the enemy. Jesus called him a murderer, called him a liar, called him a thief, called him a robber. Call them a destroyer. You can call him whatever you want to do, but you can trace it all back directly or indirectly to him. All right? Now, here's the thing. And all problems are not just sourced directly or indirectly from, uh, uh, from the devil, but also his authority and, and his access into our lives. Jesus said this. He's coming, but he don't got any authority over me, and he has no access. There's nothing in me he can work with. Have you noticed that when all this stuff comes, boy, if there's some stuff in us, it, oh, oh, man, here it come. Are you listening? Oh, I've been that guy more than one time on God's little fire pot. God just heats you up, and, then, and, and here comes bubbling up a bunch of stuff that God says, well, that ain't good. That's not like Jesus. That's not like me. We don't believe that way. We don't. And you'd be surprised, listen, at the purification. The Bible says there's one place about seven times. The, 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 the perfection. God don't mind firing you up, heating things up in the church to pull out the impurities. 
pull up the stuff that shouldn't belong there. Why? So he can get a vessel that he can, there's no obstruction. It's not going to, this, this is not going to, we, we, listen, he is not going to be tainted by the junk. Now, do you have to be perfect to serve God? No, honey. You know, I, I, I've, I've never drank of a gold goblet, but I have been the styrofoam cup a time or two. Maybe longer than when you're thirsty. Uh, folks, you know, the fancy folks need gold, but I'm telling you, if you're, if you're dying of thirst, a styrofoam cup will do. I'll tell you, just some clean hands and, you know, scooping up some water will do. Amen? So God will use anybody. But he says that he is looking for vessels of gold in the house. And there are vessels of gold in that which, you know, we, don't we want to, uh, you know, don't we want to represent the Lord well? Don't we want them somehow or other, my way, Lord, they need to see you. They need to taste you. They need to hear you. They need to, they, they need to know you for who you really are. David said it this way. He said, please, Lord, don't let what's happening to me be a stumbling block to those that are looking to you. Amen. So common to all of us also is that we have this position in which that we were once in outside of Christ. Outside of knowing, having a knowledge of his saving grace. That was our, our position. And our condition there is, is sin. It's not what God wanted. It's not what God wants. It's missing the mark for man. Is sin. You know, sin is more than wrongdoing. The greatest wrongdoing is not accepting Jesus and what he's done for us. That's it. So we can just... We can just never mind the judging one another. Well, they do this, and you know, I think that's sin. Well, <laughs> you know, aren't you glad you're not their judge? Well, now, I need to judge their fruit. Well, you know, the fruit God's looking for is the character of Christ. You know, not all of this outside stuff. It's the inside stuff. Amen. And there's only, there's only one judgment where that is concerned. Do they know Jesus or don't they? Well, I just think if they know Jesus, they wouldn't do that. Well, you know, you're probably half right where that's concerned if they really knew him. But now listen, that's between them and him. Isn't it? Oh, we got to get off of this where we just point the finger at one another all the time. See, you know, that's, it's, you know, that's really none of your business. Well, I feel like it is. Oh, I see that you have them on your heart. Let's pray for them right now. Amen. Let's just pray for them, Master. Oh, you need to help so-and-so because this one right here just is so disturbed and so frustrated with their sinfulness, God. And we just need your mercy right now. Oh, Lord, thank you that... Uh, you're not judging us according to man's measure. Thank you right now that you're merciful and kind and good and your grace is abounding where this sin is abounding. Oh, just thank you for it. And I'll guarantee you, you get the Holy Spirit working in that. All of a sudden, there's a realization for everybody involved. Amen. Quick to pray. Well, common to all people also is this is that the promises of God for every problem there are promises from God and it's available and accessible common to everybody and that should be where we point our finger to the word to the promises of God we can focus on the problems and and listen we must acknowledge that there are problems we have to be acknowledge the problems but we also must must accept the promises of God. And we must understand in some practicals in order to make progress in this process of overcoming promises with overcoming problems with the promises of God. All right? Now you got 
You got folks in this ditch over here where it's all about the problem. You got folks in this other ditch where it's all about the pro uh, all about the promise. See, it's in the middle of the road where the problem is is intercepted and you interject the promise and there's a collision there of the power of God, of the will and the way of God. We must f number one, we must face the problem, acknowledge the problem, and do so with humility. But for the grace of God, there go I. For everything I can point out in somebody else, I'm probably guilty of a lot more than that. That's the lesson of pointing, uh, of pointing fingers. Amen. And here's the thing. It's fine, uh, you know, to not be okay. It's the condition. The world is not okay. The church is not okay. But we still must be engaged in a very practical process and make some real progress where there's problems. I'll tell you, it's a, you know, we wonder why things are happening. There is millions of millions and millions, not just a few, tens of millions of baby's blood saturating this nation. And I'm going to make a notation here. I'm going to make a very significant, too much of a number of that has been aimed at, uh, aimed at our African-American community. Now, it's all peoples, all races. Don't misunderstand me at all. All right? Well, I always wonder why the devil picks this kind of a spot to focus in on. Because something's threatening him there. He sees that as a problem. Now, let me just say something here now. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not a political rally guy. I'm not a protester. I'm a prayer. I'm going to make petitions made known to God. Am I going to protest the devil? Absolutely. Do I want God's policies in, uh, enacted of the kingdom? Absolutely. All right? But I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to center up on the kingdom of God and the king. I'm going to acknowledge the problems that are out here because they lay at the feet of the church. If there's darkness, it's because there's not enough light. It's because all of this is to silence the ones who have the authority and the power to speak to it, both in the spirit and in the natural. When we come out of our prayer closet, having talked to God about men, we can talk to men now about God with power. Number one, we face the problem, acknowledge the problem, and do so with humility, but for the grace of God. Their commonality that we have. Number two, do so responsibly. Taking a responsibility, saying we are the church of the living God. It is not just so that we can have a hoopla and a hurrah. It is that we are set here to be light in the darkness. We are set here to be salt, a preservation. And there's some things that need preserving. The dignity. Are you listening? The worth, the value of life. That's worth preserving. Starting with the unborn in the womb to every life that's out here. Of every person. Because there's an eternity that matters. There's an eternity that's at stake. There's something bigger than all of us. There's a greater one and a greater thing. And we're going to have to be bold where that is concerned. Humble, but yet bold out of a responsibility to say, yes, God. Every time you saw a move of God in the old covenant, and that is for our admonition and our learning, it's still in there. It's the history book. For the church of the living God. Every time they came before, they said, God, we acknowledge that we are a people who are undone. We are acknowledge that we have turned and run our own way. We acknowledge that there is wrong, but we need right right now. And we know that only you can fix this. So we humbly put ourselves in front of you. You tell us what to do, God, and we'll do that because we are your people. 
Number two, we must find and seek out the promise. Sister, my brother, I'm going to tell you it's going to take a little more pressing in. You're going to have to run a little deeper into this thing. We're going to have to put down some roots to make a stand and put down some roots and say something different, be something different, do something different. As the church of the living God, having done all to stand, stand therefore. And you'll find it when you stand for God, that God will stand with you. We must find and seek out the promise. And I'll tell you, I believe that that is the place uh, of, that is the place for prayer. And that is the place that we'll find God's help. When we come and we say, God, we need you to tell tell me, God, show me from your word. I need to find your will and your way in this. Prayer avails God's power. It makes God's power available. And God's power is a person. I'm going to, I need to really shake up and mess up your theological, hymenautical, you know, uh, astronomical, astronautical. Space cadet. Anyhow, theology. God's power is a person. He is called the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit's work to reveal the promise that is the solution to the problem. The promise includes the plan. The promise of God's will includes the plan of God's way. You know, James said, do you have problems? Does anyone have problems or troubles? He says, let him pray. Let him pray. See? Our prayer life can and should grow greater than me, myself, and I, and my four and no more. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. You know, and this is a time where, uh, you know, where the tendency would be to draw back, to draw in, and to focus. But you listen, you have just minimalized your life and ministry. Because you were meant for a whole lot more than that. Absolutely in Jerusalem, the home place. And then Judea. And then Samaria, and then the uttermost parts of the earth. And you'll find that as you go, see, that he'll be with you. That you're with him, so he'll be with you. You know, Jesus' vision, he said, my house shall be called the house of prayer for all peoples. That should be our vision. That our prayer life needs to expand beyond just what I need, what I want my problems it should expand beyond just well those that are closest to me you know they got problems they need you listen they can be included in all peoples are you listening because i'll guarantee you there's some peoples uh outside of the circles we run in that got bigger problems than the circles we're in number four uh The plan. The plan is the salvation of God for the redemption of man. That's it. The plan for your life is that you fit in, your part and your piece is is connected to him and to one another. And that is the salvation of God, is the salvation of God. All right? We're not in the saving business. God is in the saving business. We're part of, we're just little redemption centers. See? For the redemption of man, the buying back. Who paid the price? Jesus. Isn't that right? But we want to see lives being exchanged, that old life for the new life. We're redemption centers. We're here to, we're here to connect people with God. The salvation of God. Only Jesus can save. There is no other name. Passion Church, as great a place as it is, is not the saving name. It's Jesus. Your favorite preacher, no matter how great he is, and there's some great ones.
hands. There really are some wonderful voices, such giftings in the and gracings in the in the world today. What a great time to be alive. What, how much is available to us? But their name is not the name. Paul addressed that. He goes, they had people saying, well, Paul, I'm a Paul. Others were saying, I'm of Apollos. And Paul said, wait a minute now. Who are we? We're nothing. It's Jesus. We have our part. I, I'm going to sow Paulus waters, but it's God who gives increase. There is no name given to men other than one name, and that name is Jesus. And we're going to lift him up. That is the plan. The plan is to present Jesus. You know, it's interesting how much further and faster the progress in the process goes when we are simply willing to first submit to God and then resist the devil. Yeah, I need to give you the progression here. First we submit to God, then we resist the devil. The Bible says he will flee. It's the submission to God thing. It's, you know, I, I'm, well, I'm ready where the devil's concerned. I'll fight. I'll fight whoever it is I think is the devil. First of all, <laughs> all right, it's not your wife or your husband or your friend or that family member or them folk at work. We don't war against flesh and blood. They're people. They have problems. The problem is if they're outside of Christ, they're in sin. And don't be surprised at what happens. Our deal is we want to get them in Christ. We want to get them. And when you get, listen, you introduce them. He'll deal with the Holy Spirit. will deal with the sin that bothers you and I so much that we fight so hard against religiously. Amen. No, it does little to resist the devil if there's not first a submission to God. Because God is the greater one in you is the one that's greater than the one that's in the world. Not you, the greater one in you. Yielding to God, surrendering to God, the devil ain't a problem. You know, we're, listen, how quickly the devil, the problem, flees away. Facing problems in our nation, this nation, the world over really, but we live in this one. We've got this health pandemic, a deadly pestilence. We have uh, these isms of race and class and culture. Now, you know, we're, we're coming into a season of harvest. So get ready to reap. We're coming into a season of harvest. And in every field, there is what God has sown and there is what the enemy has sown. I know you're perfect. Turn to your neighbor and just say, you know, uh, excuse me. See, uh, that probably applies to you. <laughs> I know he talked more about you than he's talking about me. It's okay. We have this condition common to man, to us all. Uh, the fact of the matter is, as you know, you know, even uh, Peter, here's another condition. Come, You know, uh, when... Uh, um, uh, the Lord spoke something to John. You know, Peter said, Oh, well, what about him? And the Lord said, It ain't about him. It's about you right now. See? You, I'll mind John. You mind you. You mind me. You know, I've tried that. I've said, Now, God, what about Sam? Uh, Sam's my wife. We're one with one another. It's taken a while to get there. Uh, you know, she's rubbed me the wrong way. I've rubbed her the wrong way. We have been sandpaper, chisels, hammers, all kind of stuff to get to where, you know, we, we fit uh, uh, together. And trust me, I prayed a lot of good prayers that God says, boy, we could work with that one right there. And say, now, Lord, what about sand? The Lord says, I'm glad you brought that up. Because what about you? I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about her. Well, I'm going to say, I want to talk about you. Well, all right. You know, if you wouldn't do that, she wouldn't act out like that. 
And she acts out a lot. <laughs> so must be I do a whole lot of stuff that makes her act out. <laughs> you know, a little humility, a little submission to God. And even if I thought Sandy was the devil, everything's good. It runs off. When two people will agree to submit to God, there is such a resistance because here comes the oil. Here comes the anointed one. Here comes the greater one in us than is in the world. Here comes the blessing of God that just pushes back the curse everywhere it comes. Hey, can you take just one more thing? You know, we have this promise that uh, from God that's such a powerful thing. And I know, uh, you know, um, I know I'm breaking the rules that um, it should only go 20 minutes or 30 minutes, but I need just a moment more. We have this wonderful promise in the it's found in Second Chronicles. I've heard that. Jesus, ain't you got something else? I pray that the Holy Spirit will give us a hearing and a seeing today. It says, if... I ever shut off the supply of rain from the skies or order the locusts to eat the crops or send a plague on my people. My people, my God-defined people, respond by humbling themselves, praying, seeking my presence, and turning their backs on their wicked lives. I'll be there ready for you. I'll listen from heaven. I'll forgive their sins and restore their land to help. From now on, I'm alert day and night to the prayers offered at this place. I believe this is a word for us as a people from God. We've come all of this way, pointed out a lot of things, landmarks to see, to bring us to the place. I really believe that we're entering into a time uh, and a season to pray. And not just any way, oh God, about what's happening now all around us, see, but to pray the promise, to move from praying the problem, to move to praying the promise, and to grab a hold with the intent of, God, you promise hearing, you promise healing, you promise that you would take care of this. If I'll meet the requirements, because if is a requirement word, if my people that are God-defined, defined by God. Well, we're the church. We're the responsible ones. We're the authorized ones. And we are the ones who have been trained in uh, the, with the ability to rule and reign in this life, in righteousness, in Him. Let me give you an example of this real quick, and then we will be finished. You know, there was a nation that was in trouble. There was a nation that was facing problems. It's found over in Second uh, Chronicles, the twentieth, uh, the twentieth verse, uh, the twentieth chapter, tenth verse. It says, "Now it's happened, men from Ammon." Well, let me go at this. Uh, there's this prayer of Jehoshaphat, and he outlines. He brings the problem to God. And he outlines this. It says, uh, he says this, When the worst happens, whether war or flood or disease or famine, and we take our place before this temple, we know you are personally present in this place and pray out our pain and trouble. We know that you will listen and give victory. And now it's happened. Men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir have showed up. You didn't let Israel touch them when we got here at first. We do toward around them and didn't lay a hand on them. And now they've come to kick us out of the country you gave us. Oh, dear God, won't you take care of them? We're helpless before this vandal horde ready to attack us. Now, look. He presents the problem to God, but now look at the presentation here. All true. 
But there's a submission, humility before God. And it culminates in this. It says, we don't know what to do. We're looking to you. Trouble is sometimes we just think we have all the answers. God, and we pray that, God, if you would just do this, if you would do it this way, see, I know everything would be okay. See? No, no, here's the proper sense. He goes, pay out, we pray out our pain and trouble. We lay out the situation. We say, this is what's happening. This is a real problem we're facing here. We don't know what to do. But our eyes are on you. This is a proper position for the condition that we're in. And look, he goes down further. It says, everyone in Judah was there. Little children, wives, sons, all present and attentive to God. There is a time when we need to be called to attention and be present. There's a time when nothing else matters because of what we're facing that we need that it's got our attention enough to where we pay attention and we get in front of God and everybody's there. Cuz it's going to affect everybody. Everybody's there. Like on the day of Pentecost. Are you listening? They were all fretting and worried about all this timing and everything like that. He said, "I want you to watch and to wait until the promise until the Holy Spirit comes." From the Father, there will be an outpouring. And boy, I'll tell you what, you will then be a witness. And it won't just be here, it will be in Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. I will raise up a witness. I will show myself strong. I will be the greater one that's greater than all of this. There's a place for the true waiting and watching as we come into the place of God. Into God, And it said this, they were in one accord. They said there isn't anything more important and that matters more than this right now because we take our place of responsibility and accepting that we are going to have authority and ability in this situation because we're going to hear from God. Because God is the ultimate problem solver. God is the ultimate promise giver. God is the ultimate power to make a way where there doesn't seem to be any way. Forgive me for getting just a little bit stirred and excited because I have such an expectancy. I sense the turn. I sense the shift happening. And the shift needs to be, listen, run to the altar. Get in front of the porch and the altar and cry out in front of God. Acknowledge the problem. Problem. We're part of it. Let there be reconciliation in the house of God. Let the ministry of the Holy Spirit begin with us. That we be reconciled to God in rightness and rightness and reconciliation with one another. How hard is it to say, God, you were right all along and I've been so very wrong. Then how hard is it once you're forgiven to go and live and, and live and, and give forgiveness to other folks? Say, man, I'll tell you, I thought this way and I was this way. I talked this way. I acted that way. But look here. God has shown me and I want to share with you. Please, please give me grace. Amen. Oh, you know what the body needs to supply to grow up in God? You know, the first supply of the Spirit, the supply of the Holy Ghost, needs to be this reconciliate, the oil of the anointing of the anointed one. The anointed one hung on a cross for all, for everyone, everywhere. There wasn't anything that anyone could ever do except reject what he was doing in that moment. I'll tell you, the greatest sin can be forgiven. The greatest sinner can be redeemed. The greatest division can be reconciled. Because of that cross between God and man. What a difference when we walk across that bloodline. When we walk across that to our brother, our sister. Those that are different than us. And I'll tell you, you can be so saved, you're too far gone and saved. You forget where you came from. Honey, you got saved, but he left you in the world. Not to be overaffected by the evil that's in the world, be kept from it, but to stay in it and get some other folks delivered. Oh, the salvation of God is still for the redemption of man. Don't limit God and don't limit yourself. I mean, everywhere you go, people are thinking about, are these the last days? 
is, and the next thought will be, I have so folks that are not saved. If these really are the last days, if this really is a culmination, I can't see how this world can go on like this. But I've got family. I've got friends. I've got neighbors. I know people that I know and love that I cannot stand the thought of them living separated from God for forever. Because I'll tell you the reality of really bearing the presence of God, of living in this unity, a oneness with Him, is that we, that we see what's happening now. But, oh my goodness, the weight of eternity is over all of us. And that, we, and that every step we take, every breath we take, that there's an awareness that every day we're hunting something. We're hunting someone. We're looking for lost. We're looking for folks that are undone and not right. We know some. And if we can't get them across today, we, we pray for them, we leave them, we keep looking for the, the ones that we can move them a little closer. A little closer because someone's praying for them. And you're the answer to that prayer. And while you're praying for yours, are you listening? And you're an answer to them praying for theirs. God will make sure that there will be someone that's the answer for your prayers. Because all things will work together when the body works together on one thing. The God thing. Oh, I got to hurry. You know, uh, they... They had a problem. It was presented. He said they were all together there. Uh, a ten, and, and it said when they got together, it said Jehaziel was moved by the Spirit of God to speak from the midst of the congregation. Here's a together together. Here they're in front of God, attentive, listening. God's tell us, show us. We don't know what to do. And the Spirit of God moved in that. And grace came to the humble in the situation. And the Spirit of God moved. And God began to and the, see the anointed one and his anointing came. And it says uh, this. It says, attention everyone, all of you from out of town. All you from Jerusalem. All you insiders and outsiders and you King Jehoshaphat, God's word. Don't be afraid. I'll tell you what now. The church needs to talk to the leadership in this nation. Speak to power with truth. He saved that for last. Well, I can't get a hearing. You have a hearing with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You have a hearing with the ruler of everyone and everything. Talk to Him. And your prayers will have an effect in the highest office in the land, in the world over. Even in the King's palace. The Holy Ghost is not limited. Is not limited. But you've got to pray for folks. You can't pray against people. Are you listening? You can't pray with the prejudice and the hatred in your heart. I'm talking to people. Are you listening? Donkeys and elephants. People that love this one, hate that one, hate that one, love this one. Amen? Amen. <laughs> You don't get to be a king without God knowing about it. Without God's approval. And God, he says, I am the ruler of the nations. I set one up, pull another one down. And he don't care what our opinion is of it. Amen. Hallelujah. The one you hated the most was good for God's plan for the kingdom to come. The one you loved, uh, the one you loved the most was good for the kingdom to come and God's will being done. Aren't you listening? And realize they come and go, but God stays the same. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. You know what my prayer is for this? Oh, I said I wasn't going to get over and all that. But I tell you, you know what my prayer for that? I used to pray dumb, stupid, ignorant, uninformed prayers. But now I pray, you know, oh Lord, you know, you're going to choose for us. We're going to obey you as much as we know how, but each and every one their own situation. It's a seed that's sown. But here's, the, but here's the thing. God, more than anything else, I want what is going to be best for the kingdom of God. What, condition, what position and, and condition do, do we need to be in? Do we need to have, see, 
for the kingdom of God to advance, to advantage and advance, where more people can come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, I believe that's the right kind of prayer God can answer. Now, it has nothing to do with political preference. I know I kicked the bucket you've been sitting on out from underneath you. It's okay. You've got padding back there, and you'll bounce. I sat on a little three-legged stool for a whole year in the middle of the field, and God says, let's just stay here until you realize it's all from me, and it's all for me, son. Just sit still. There's only one thing I want you to know. It's all from me, and it's all for me. And if you'll agree with me, oh, I'm telling you, you'll get more from me. And I'll be more for you than I've ever been because you're more for me than you've ever been. I'm telling you, we're hearing some good things here today. And I know it's taken a little bit longer and a little stronger maybe than what we would prefer. But, you know, there was a problem. There was a call to prayer that presented the problem to God and a promise comes. He said, this is not your fight. The Lord's going to fight for you. We're fighting for the salvation of God, for the redemption of man. Don't forget. Don't waste all of your silver bullets on trying to shoot one another in friendly fire. We're fighting for. The salvation of God. And what did he say? He said, this is not your fight because I'm the greater one. But I do need you. I do need you to do something. I need you to believe me. He said, I need you. He said, and he, and he absolutely, if you do your homework here, he absolutely said, you're going to go out tomorrow. And they're going to come up this way. You're going to find them right here. This is how they're coming up. This is the, God gave them a strategy. Now, it doesn't say it in here, but you know that they had to, if they prayed, they probably prayed with the intent to obey. You know, when you pray and then obey, you, you have power. So, so they knew just what to do. Because, see, the end of praying is praising. The end of praying. What they do? They put God out in front. Well, if it's your fight... <laughs> Here. God says, you go out tomorrow. We go, you go first. For the Lord is good, and his love and mercy endureth forever. For the Lord is good. Amen. Man, they got God out in front of them. You know, there's something about praying. You know you're through when the Holy Ghost starts to sing. A, a song comes up on the inside of you. You'll just, be, you'll just be musing the problem, you know, but if you ever get it in the right order, all of a sudden here comes a, a, a spontaneous, a praise comes up. I mean, you'll wonder why you're happy because you're trying so hard to be mad and sad. And here comes the Holy Spirit. He's glad. Why? Because he knows how it's going to wind out. That if you'll let him fight your battles. Is this is how we fight our battles. Amen. With a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. In the middle of. Hallelujah. Well, we're about done here today. Can you see this? There's a plan that's practically applied. And I'm going to tell you what. The promise obeyed. And a people was saved. A people was saved. Don't forget what God is after in all of this. He's after saving a people. He's after a saved people bringing the good news and the example and the witness of redemption. Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you what now. I just think that those... Elephants and Democrats are unredeemable. I just think the 
uh, I just think this and that about this one and that one. We all have our judgments, don't we, you know? But you know there were people that were praying over you and it, you looked like such an impossibility. I know your saved self don't remember, but I'm asking the Holy Ghost to call to your remembrance right now. See, are you listening? What, what, how bad you stunk from the pig pen of the world. How, you know, but the Lord didn't pay any attention to that. He come running to you. When he saw you on the horizon, he came running to you. Isn't that right? And boy, he, he said, whoo, we need to, he didn't say, man, boy, you stank. He said, quick, get the robe. Quick, get the robe. Quick, get the love. Get the love of the Father. Let's cover him. Let, let's put this nice smell and stuff. Let's, let's automatically, let's change how he sees himself. Let's cover him. And get the ring. Let's reinstate him. Let's, he's re, this is redemption. I know you were a long way, but I got you back again, and I'm not ever going to let you go. This time it's not just my idea, it's your idea too. Don't go nowhere, stay right here. You'll be blessed in Father's house, amen. Listen, if you've been here uh, listening to us today, I want to announce good news to you. There is the salvation of God, there is redemption for you. There's redemption for your family, for your friends, for those that are far, far Far from God. And we're looking for God to not just do that in a little way, but in a greater way than we've ever known before. And I'm going to tell you, you know, by the grace of God, because of all that has happened, I'm talking to you today. Beyond the four walls of this church. You're hearing this message of God's salvation today. Out of the ruin can come revival. I believe that. And I want you to listen if you want to, if you're ready. God will do this for you. What he's done for every one of us, he will do for you. You're not too far, God. You're not too far. You're not unsavable. You're not unredeemable. You have not been too bad. You're not so far that God cannot reach you right where you're at. And the fact that you're hearing me today is... Proof positive that God's after you. That God wants you. And if you want him, pray this simple prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I thank you for all that you've done. I will follow you. I choose you as my God. Be my master. Be my Lord. I accept your forgiveness and your righteousness right now. And thank you, Lord, for saving me, redeeming me. I'll follow you the rest of my days. Amen. If you prayed that prayer in a minute, I've got good news for you. You are a child of God. Now, you may not feel anything on the outside or even on the inside, but I can tell you feelings will come. They'll follow your faith. And today you exercise faith in the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And he, will, and he does exactly what he says. He says, no one that comes to him will he ever turn away. But you have to come to the Father only by Him, no other name. And you accepted that name. Now you're named by that name. Congratulations. We would love to help you in any way that we can. There's a whole church body uh, here of people that have been saved and redeemed that will be more than happy to help you with your first steps along, along the way and help you be successful all the way through to eternity. God bless you. Until the next time.